Hi, my name is Devish. My name is Eric. My name is Michelle. And my name is Mohammed, and we are the Quantized Pandas. Quantum Overview. A quantum computer is a new type of computer that takes advantage of the properties of quantum mechanics. A quantum algorithm is an algorithm that runs on a quantum computer. A qubit is the fundamental unit of information in quantum com computing. It's compared, it's like a classical bit. It takes advantage of a superposition, which allows for the qubit to be in a zero state, a one state, and everything in between. But why is this useful? It's because quantum computers speed up tasks that would take naturally forever on a regular computer. So some of the applications. Quantum computers allow us to simulate pulses of different natures, which may let us create fluid flow simulations, create fast and advanced financial simulations, and train neural networks more efficiently than classical computers. And to do these, we need to solve systems of linear equations really, really quickly, and a lot of them all together, which we can do with the quantum advantage of the HHL algorithm. The Harrow has symboloid algorithm, also known as the HHL algorithm. So the HHL algorithm takes a matrix A, which contains the coefficients of the equations that we want to solve. Solution vector B contains the value on the right hand of the equal sign. And the output solution vector X contains the variables that we're solving for. Here you can see the circuit diagram of the HHL algorithm. We start with the initialization of B phase estimation, controlled rotation, inverse phase estimation, measurement, and then post-processing. So the first step in the algorithm is to prepare the data vector B. Quantum state preparation is important because we can't directly work with classical data in quantum computing. So we need vector B to be scaled into the amplitude of the qubit. Quantum phase estimation. QPE helps us to measure any self-adjoint matrix. Quantum computers permit us to measure individual qubits, but if we need to measure a more complex observable algorithm, we have to use quantum phase estimation. Inverse QPE is required after doing QPE inside of an algorithm in order to measure a qubit. At the high level, QPE essentially prepares the eigenstates of the Hermitian operator in the register and stores the corresponding eigenvalue in the second register. Eigenvalue inversion. This is the magic and what makes the HLHL algorithm work. The goal is to put the qubit register into the state seen to the right. This seems hard, but this can be achieved by rotating the first qubit in the register about the y-axis based on the eigenvalues that was previously encoded into the qubit registers by the QPE. Classical post-processing. Most algorithms today are hybrid algorithms, meaning that they're both quantum and classical in nature. For the quantum portion, we run it 10,000 times, or we have 10,000 shots. That means we get 10,000 measurements. Of these measurements, we only count the measurements that end with a 1. And of those measurements, we take the probability of measuring a zero in the first instance and a one in the first instance. Taking both those probabilities, we take the square root and this prepares our X state, which contains our variables that we're solving for. But if we take these values and divide both of them, we'll get the ratio of the X and Y variables. Results. We ran our algorithm on IBM's quantum computers, Oslo and Nairobi. And it really shows the amount of error that you can find in today's quantum computers. Our algorithm sh should negate the effects of computations on the, second two on the second qubit and the third qubit. But here we can see that a lot of our measurements have one states in the second and third qubits. This goes to show the amount of error that you find in today's quantum com computers. This is what an ideal simulation would look like. We see that there are all zeros in the second and third qubits. And of the last qubits, there are two that we measured with one. And one has one measurement is 0, 0, 0, 1. And the other is 1, 0, 0, 1. We see that both of these have probability about 2.5, which means that the ratio of our variables is a one to one, about a 1 to 1 ratio. So some of the resource estimation of the HHL algorithm that we implemented. So the qubit count used was four qubits used. And we used 49 gates within the HHL algorithm. And the average circuit construction time was about 3.729 nanoseconds. 
So overall, this HHL algorithm was extremely efficient because of the relatively few gates used, the quick construction time, and the low amount of qubits used in all. And this algorithm is very efficient to use because of the low amount of qubits used. And the relatively low amount of gates used allows us to manipulate a qubit with lower amounts of potential error in between because there are fewer environmental factors, like photonic rays, that can disrupt the qubit between its first use and its final measurement. Our main obstacle is understanding the notation of the math operations in the language that research papers use. When we finished the code, another big problem was understanding what the output meant and how to use it. But with some time and help from the instructors, we were able to solve these issues. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you enjoyed our presentation. You know who made